welcome to Outreach Connection, focusing on topics and issues that reach our communities with the love and the power of Jesus Christ. And greetings and welcome again to Outreach Connection. I'm Gary Schluckabeer, your host, joining you wherever you're at or whatever time of the day it is that you're watching our program here. And Outreach Connection is exactly what it means. We're, we want to reach out for the cause of the Lord Jesus Christ, and we want to connect with you. Or we want to connect with maybe you know somebody we need to connect with that, that you can spread the word around. I want to read uh, out of Isaiah chapter 58, verse 12, which is usually uh, kind of my theme verse here on, uh, on the program. And it says, And they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations. And thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of paths to dwell in. And of course, that is exactly what Outreach Connection is all about, exactly what uh, we're intending to do here. And before I introduce my guests this morning, or whatever time of the day, once again, it is that you're watching here, before I introduce my guests, I want to talk to you a little bit, because when this is being aired, next week is July the 20th. And that Wednesday is National Wear Across Day. Now, you've heard me talk about this before. Been doing this for the last three years, getting this effort out to pray for America, to wear a cross, that everybody would wear a cross that day, and to represent, I'm not ashamed of God. We need God in our country. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, because that's what our country, the Judeo, Christian principles is what our country was founded upon. And we have in the last plus 200 years gone astray. You know that very much. The Lord even said that in the last days, <laughs> you know, he prophesied this was going to happen. So here we are at this time. What are we going to do about it? Well, we're going to call out to God. And let me let me just share. I, I do have cards, as you know, too. If you maybe some of your churches have you, you've received one of these, put them on your refrigerator so you don't forget that on uh, uh, July the 20th to wear a cross and pray for America, especially that day. Um, and but we talk about out of Second Chronicles, chapter seven, verse 14, which is God's way of healing America. If my people, that's us which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, turn from their wicked ways. God says, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin. And here's the great thing about it that I'm looking forward to. Well, for my children and grandchildren, even great grandchildren now, <laughs> that God would heal our land. We need God in a, in a magnificent way. And, and, and I'm going to say one more thing. I'm going to get to you in a minute. <laughs> i got to say one more thing, though, because I've had men tell me, well, I really don't wear a cross. I know, you know, it, it's, uh, uh, you know, we're manly or whatever. But on that day, would you get a cross out of lapel pin or maybe a little wristband or something like that uh, and uh, wear a cross that day? So I'm not ashamed of God Almighty in our country. We need God. And so I, I'm, I'm just speaking to the men here. You know, you let me do that. And, uh, but to wear that day and pray for America, especially this year with it being the uh, election year coming up, we really need guidance from God. Our government, our congressmen, our senators, our states, our local governments, we need guidance from God and God help. Well, that's my commercial for National Wear Across Day, you know, praise the Lord. I have got with me here today an exciting couple that has a, a great healing ministry, and God is using them magnificently, uh, Todd and Robin Osborne. Thank you for being around the table here with me. I really appreciate it, and I've uh, been looking forward to uh, ever since I saw you all minister at our church and, and to come and be a part and to share. Uh, what God is doing in your ministry and in your lives. So welcome here thank to you. Outreach Connection. Oh, thank you for having us, Gary. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Now, you're from the local area here, right? Yes, we live right here in Quincy. Yeah. And transplanted from 
New York? New York. Yeah, a few years ago. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you're here. Yes, and we're glad to be here. Yeah. 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 Well, tell us a little bit. Let, let's begin at the beginning. I, I like the uh, audience to know a little bit about you. Um, so we, uh, why don't we just begin with Robin here. Tell us a, a little bit of your story. How, how did you allow God to come in your life? I'm going to put it that way. You know, because we have the choice to let him in or not. He's wanting to come in. How did you find the Lord? What Was you raised in a Christian home or what? I was raised in a Christian home, yes. Always um, went to church. We did outreaches from the community. We had um, Christian missionaries come and stay at our home. New York? In New York, okay. yes. Okay. yes. A little, little small town in okay. upstate New York. And um, so I always knew the Lord. And when I was a little girl, the Lord told me that I'd, you know, do the same kind of thing. Go around, travel around the country and, you know, You knew minister. the Lord's voice yes, as a little girl. I did. Awesome. I did. So later got married and, um, you know, it was a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful marriage and had two little girls. And um, But because of my husband's um, profession that he was in, um, he he knew the Lord, but he wasn't serving the Lord. So I... I started, I started, yeah, you know, he, it was, you know, it, it was um, a tough job that he was in and, you know, kind of made him a little angry and that, so I was like, okay, I want a little peace in my house. Yeah. So I began to pray. I prayed for 20 years that he would get, be saved, Incredible. know the Lord, wow. 20 years. Even um, when our daughter, Rachel, was 15, she went to the Brownsville Revival put in a prayer card with Steve Hill, pray for my dad, you know, to be saved. So after, I like at the end of that 20 years, um, I, I kind of gave up. I said, Lord, this is too hard because I tried to change him, tried to change, you know, I wanted a good teaching point. Yeah. And so I sat in my bedroom and I said, Lord, I can't do this anymore. The very next day he asked me, I sat down in my chair with my Bible you know, saying, Lord, you know, I want our family to be together. And he came out of the office and said, let's go to church today. And I was like, okay. <laughs> I was all ready, you know. So we, we did, didn't go to our normal um, Methodist church in Osable. We went 30 miles away to Assembly of God that I had gone to also and went to church and he as soon as the pastor gave the altar call, he ran up, flipped chairs and everything, and he just got saved. This and man here. This man here. Okay. <laughs> so it was wonderful. So yeah. from that, so that's kind of where we are now. Persistence and prayer, prayer. is so important. It's Don't give up. Never give up. Yeah. Never give up. Never give up. Never give up. Yeah. No. God always hears and answers. Well, let's get to Mr. Brother <laughs> Todd here. Okay, now. Because I want to hear a little bit about your profession too, what you were in mm -hmm. for the anger and everything, mm -hmm. and I understand that. But um, so, where did what's your beginning? Well, I was raised in a Christian home. We were uh, uh, raised Catholic, um, so you know we went to church. Yeah. Um, a true relationship with the Lord. Um, that's kind of hard to answer. Um, I know who God was. Yeah. And I talked to God even as a young man, and Most I knew everybody that, understands that. You know, it's listening. <clears throat> And I had, to, you know, I would talk to God as a child, so I knew God had a call on my life, except I wasn't obedient. So I was kind of trying to avoid that. So you know, uh, um, you Did know. Did you call it rebellion? Oh, I would definitely call it rebellion. Okay. You know, okay. um, that's what it was. Yeah. Um, so um, it took you know years and years of prayer uh, for God to you know move me in the direction that He wanted to move me in. Mm -hmm. So. Um, it was, I can't say it's a real dramatic uh, uh, conversion that I had, other than it's uh, you know over a long uh, period of time. Yeah. But uh, when I went into the church, I felt the presence of God immediately, and God convicted me of sin. And when the altar, when the pastor called the altar call, if you were in my way, you were going down because I was getting to that altar call. You know, I just you know the things that were in my life. You know, I was trying to do it my way. It wasn't working. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you looked on the outside, you'd look at, okay, nice house, family, all the toys, but no peace. So, you know, something was missing, and it was Jesus. So, um, you know, when I finally, you know, 
submit it to God, um, he changed my life dramatically. Yeah. Right. Thank God for conviction, yeah. a spirit of conviction. Because mm -hmm. I, there's, I think there's some people out there that are watching us that don't know how to handle that. You know, I said, I mean, there's no one that convicts you but the Holy Spirit in the first place of, of that sin, you know, or of right. that wrongdoing. Right. Mm -hmm. Sure. That's right. his job. And boy, to feel that, the sense that I, I know, you know, you, you're writing, you're, you're in my book, you know, you're almost telling my story too, you know. And, um, but uh, then, so you found the Lord and you started serving Him. Yes. So, and, and, Let's just go ahead and move into that area, and because I want to, I want everybody to hear about your ministry that you're doing now. I don't, you know, as we're going here. So you moved in. When did you start? Then when did you feel the call of God on your lives to go into the ministry? Because you've pastored, yeah, too. You're, you've, you're ordained ministers, right? And you've pastored. And so when did you feel the call of God then? How well, did that all work out from your job? Right. Well, you know, uh, job. it was kind of interesting because God doesn't waste anything in your life. Right. You know, the good, the bad, and the ugly, he doesn't waste it. Yeah. So it, it's all a process for what he's calling you to do. Not that he agrees with some of the stuff you've done, obviously. Of course. But he'll use it. Yes. So I worked in law enforcement uh, for okay. 30 years. Uh, I started out as an officer and sergeant, and then I got uh, appointed by Governor Pertaki in New York to run a special operations unit, so crisis mm -hmm. intervention unit to work in that. So I was a lieutenant in the special operations covering the whole state of New York. So Can I just stop and say sure. uh, the thought that's going through my mind with that, you talk about evil. Mm -hmm. You were really dealing in evil. Yeah, and see, this is the thing, you know. Crime, you know, I mean, you know, yeah, that's... You know, this is the thing, you know, um, when you're dealing with negativity, Negative, negative situations yeah, you all the time. Not that I'm saying what I did was right. Yeah. You know, uh, being angry at home is not not being right. You know, it's, it's totally against the word of God. It's it's sin. So, um, but when you're around that environment of be dealing with uh, you know negative situations constantly, you actually, you know, think about it. Thirty years in a business where you're dealing with you know negative situations. Your life is on the line. Ninety-nine percent of the time, right. you know. Um, they're not calling you for anything good. It's always something negative, sure. you know. Right. Exactly. So, so exactly. you know that's gonna that's gonna wear on you at some point, you yeah. know. Yeah. So, um, but you know, God used that, you know, um, to not only change me but to give me a different perspective on really what's happening. Yeah. yeah. So. so, then when did you move into ministry, though? I mean, let's let's come back to that. Well, I actually, got, even even through uh, you know what I was doing in law enforcement, you know. Did, got, now let me let me stop. Did you retire? Are you retired from law enforcement? I did, but I was Enough actually pastoring. In? I was pastoring and still doing okay. uh, law enforcement okay. uh, for almost a year. So, um, you know, I went to Bible school and all that <laughs> in between. You know, uh, but uh, just. Uh, Working in a negative environment, but what God had me do was also train thousands of people in law enforcement. So, you know, I worked with a lot of different agencies, but I also trained a lot of people. Okay. So I didn't really like being around people. So God, you know, if you're going to minister, you're going to have to be around people. Uh huh. Okay. So God used that <laughs> yeah. to launch me off into what we okay. do today. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't wasted. You know what I mean? So I had to train, you know, thousands and thousands of people sure. and do presentations for law enforcement, you know, sure. all over. So. Yeah. Well then, let's move into that area because I want, I, I want the audience to hear what are you, how, how's your ministry flow today? When you go into a church, what's your ministry like? What's God got you doing? Because I know it's a healing ministry. I've seen it, and um, I know for both of you because you're you're a prayer warrior, mm -hmm. and uh, you have your your websites. You can and uh, emails that you can people can get in touch mm -hmm. with you. Your own mm -hmm. phone numbers to pray for. So tell us, how, how do you minister today? What, what, what's some of the things you're seeing in the church today in, in ministry? Because I know it's exciting. It is exciting. You know, really what you know, we try to do is, uh, you know, we're evangelists. You know, we, we try to uh, promote the kingdom of God and, uh, you know, help people uh, to understand they need a relationship with Jesus Christ, first and foremost. Um, really, our ministry is based on the Word of God. So really, uh, uh, I, I'm a teacher. I like to teach the Word of God, and, and that is good for everyone. You do now. a good job. Now, I've heard you. <laughs> well, thank you. Um, you know, it's like I don't focus my ministry on healing. I just don't. I mean, healings happen. Um, 
but God says, you know, he'll confirm his word with what? Signs following. So, you know, we focus on the word of God. You know, everybody can use the word. Everybody can apply it to their life. And when they apply the word to their life, um, they'll see dramatic results. You know, Amen. so uh, healing is a basically a byproduct of, you know, teaching the word of God. So as you teach yes. the word of God and mm -hmm. you sit under that, you know, the atmosphere changes. And what people need, you know, from Jesus, from the Father, from the Holy Spirit, is in that atmosphere. Mm -hmm. So as you're preaching the Word of God, teaching the Word of God, the atmosphere is being created so that people can receive what they need to receive from Jesus. And you know, yeah. we see dramatic healings. And, and and what is happening are showing some uh, pictures there now of in your services and stuff. But what is happening in your ministry or any ministry when healing happens is uh, preaching the Word, preach the Word number one and then <clears throat> is that Jesus said these things these things will happen too what what I did you will do right. and even greater mm -hmm. because I've gone to the father and seated beside him on the right side and that's the power of the Holy Spirit you know that's working through you right you know in Matthew it talks <laughs> about you know these signs will follow those that believe mm -hmm. you know, they'll lay their hands on the sick and they'll recover you know and you and, believe that Oh, I believe the word of God. Yeah, of course you believe. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I just had to, I want to make yeah. that point. Yeah. That's faith. We that's have right. to, that's our job mm -hmm. to do. That's yes, right. I believe We have it. to believe that. And, you know, um, there's been many uh, men and women in our lives, you know, uh, men and women of God that have really been, you know, fundamental in instructing us and teaching sure. us, oh. you know, uh, about right. about how to minister, you know, and, you know, Pastor Michael Sansusi from our church, I mean, you know, he's the one that, you know, <laughs> gave the altar call so that I would get saved, you know. So, and then you have, you know, uh, the people here, you know, you have uh, uh, Pastor Tony Kemp and Deborah Kemp, his wife, you know, who have been really tremendously influenced, impacted our lives, mm -hmm. you know, um, and have just been so uh, gracious to us, you know, in teaching us and uh, come alongside them uh, mm -hmm. to, uh, you know, the further the kingdom of God. It's been tremendous. We've, we've got to have those mentors. I don't care how mm -hmm. old we get, and we never stop learning. No, you know, the no, word yet. Because, mm -hmm. well, I have found that, and and I know you have too. Every experience when you go into a church to minister, every situation is different. Mm -hmm. Every need is different. Maybe the same, but yet different. Every circumstance is okay. different, and the Holy Spirit knows how to give you the message, the word, you know, to share with those who come. And let me, let me say this, too, uh, before we move on. Any pastor out there, if you're looking for um, uh, them to come to minister, you can get um, their f on their phone or on their email. I think we've got it on the screen. It comes up at different times here. We can um, and just give them a call and make an arrangement to make, uh, for them to come some, some uh, time to minister at your church. And I, I tell you, it's, it's, uh, you won't regret it. It's, they, they have a, a, an exciting ministry, and they present it very, very, it won't be boring. <laughs> I mean, how about that? It's never you boring. Know, of course, that's the Holy Spirit. You know, yes. it's, not, it's not us. It's yeah. not you. Right. It's just the Holy Spirit. You know, we can do nothing except God equips us. You know, so right. you know it's it's it's. I, I feel very humble that God would actually use me. Yes. You know, uh, yeah. to you know further His kingdom. You know, um, we come from a small town, like, you know, under 500 people. You know, in the middle of really nowhere in New York. You know, <laughs> yeah. um, but you know, it's like there's always hope for people. God sees something good in everyone. You know, he's created each one Amen. of us. He sees something really good in each one of us, and he wants us to see through his eyes. Mm -hmm. You know, the, he, wa he wants me to see the good in you. He wants me to see the good in the person walking down the street. Right. You know, uh, he wants me to see, you know, those that are hurting through his eyes, mm -hmm. you know, so that we can reach out to them and share the gospel with them and help. You know, it says Jesus yeah. went about doing good and healing the <laughs> sick. So we need to do the good that Jesus wants us to do, you yeah. know, and, you know, the rest will follow. And, you know, God, I always like to think God puts those, those thoughts in our minds. Okay, we, uh, should I do this or is this God or, or not? Unless we step out into the water, get out of the boat, okay. just like what you've done. Mm -hmm. You know, you probably remember your first time you stepped out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. oh, yeah. The first time you laid your hand on somebody oh, yeah. to pray for them. Mm -hmm. Was that a little, you know, uh, should I do this or not? But then when you saw God move, it can give you confidence. Mm -hmm. But the other thing That's is, right. Brother Todd, 
is that um, God has given, and I've just done a teaching on this at our church, um, on gifts. We all have a gift. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, and, and your gift is different, but we need you in the ministry just like we need my gift in the ministry. And to help people to develop that, that gift that God has given them out of Romans chapter 12. Right. What God has given them to have a, a um, to use that gift, it's there for a reason. It's for the kingdom of God. It's for souls, you know, that to be ministered to here. Right. And um, sometimes I think maybe maybe we've lost that a little bit. You know, over the years we get that complacency that we're in this day and age, you know, with mm -hmm. the church. We got to, you know, bring that back a lot. But you have that special gift that, that God uses and flows through, like, like you have that special gift too, mm -hmm. you know, um, for anybody who needs prayer, mm -hmm. a lady. Right. You know, right. If, if ladies out there, you, you've got something you want to talk about to another lady, here's a lady to talk right. about to. That's true. And she'll pray with you, get her on, on the phone. and. And you can go from I'm I'm really putting you out there, but <laughs> that's okay, that's but okay. that's what your that's, that's what, what ministry is. That's what it is. That's like you said a while ago. Well, I didn't want to be around people. <laughs> <You know? laughs> well, if you're going to be in ministry, brother, guess what? You're going to be around people. <laughs> you're going to love those people, that's though. Right. You mm -hmm. love doing what you that's do. Don't you? Oh, I love it. Mm -hmm. I would I would do nothing else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just you know when I got saved, you know when Jesus met me at the mm -hmm. altar, you know when I repented of my sins and turned my life over to Jesus. You know, a peace flooded my life. Yeah. You know, that's what I was missing. I was missing Jesus. Mm -hmm. And that peace flooded my life, and, and everything changed from that moment. Yeah. I mean, I even tell people, you know, it's like when I walked out of the church, even the colors looked different to me. <laughs> that's true. The, the sky really was alive. bluer, you know, the yeah. grass was greener, you know. Mm -hmm. It's just Jesus did a, a transformation in my life, you know, and, uh, you know, the peace of God was with me. Yeah. You know, so we're all works in progress, you know, and, and we're going through a process. And, uh, you know, when we keep submitting to Jesus, it gets better and better and better. And that is, uh, in my thoughts, um, that is the born again experience. You were born mm -hmm. again. That's Absolutely. Right. Mm -hmm. Born again. Jesus mm -hmm. said you must be born again. And um, I promise you out there, if, if you're not born again, I want you to listen to what we're saying. Maybe you go to church and you know all about God and everything, but do you have you have Him in your head? But do you have Him in your heart? And and the, to get that passion for the Lord Jesus Christ, it is being born again. It actually happens. It, you know, I I can't say enough about it. You know, I talk about it all the time for myself I, and how my attitude changed. A, a hunger for the Word. Right. I read the Word, but I didn't read the Word. All right. You know, I, I think I've read more out of obligation. And but when I was born again, then a hunger and a thirst. And in fact, I had a, a little Bible, a little New Testament and Psalms Bible that you carry in your pocket. Mm -hmm. And when I was the job that I had, then every chance I got, I read and I highlight. Oh, that's good. That's good. well, I never saw that. I, that you know, <laughs> right. that Bible was that's all right. marked up. That's right. And I, I, I don't know whatever happened to it. I don't know. <laughs> over these many years, it's gone. But, but anyway, that born again experience to come alive. That's right. You know, and then for God then to really use you and to be aware of that. Yeah. That's awesome. You know, we're coming down here so quickly. We're coming down to the wire. And I've asked Brother Todd if he would just give a call out. You know, if you're out there and you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, I've asked Brother Todd. He's going to look in camera three and he's going to mm -hmm. talk to you about salvation just for a couple minutes here. Mm -hmm. And uh, Brother Todd, share, share Jesus. Share your heart with how it's done. It's not about the words that you use. It's really about the condition of the heart. Now, you, you know, you might know Jesus, and, and you might have stepped away from him. You know, you might not be fulfilling the call that God has on your life, or you might not even have a relationship with Jesus. But it's really about the condition of your heart. Are you missing something? If you are, then you need to, to reach out to Jesus. He's right here. So just, it's not about the words. It's about meaning the word. So I'm going to pray a prayer. If you pray with me and you mean it from your heart, Jesus will intervene in your life and you'll be born again. Father, I thank you for who you are. Mm. And Father, I thank you, thank you that you've sent Jesus on the cross to pay for my sins. God, I've tried it my way and it's not working out too good. Father, forgive me. Wash me. Cleanse me. Make me new. I thank you for the shed blood of Jesus on the cross 
that cleanses me, that heals me, that washes me, that makes me whole, that makes me new. Holy Spirit, <clears throat> fill me now yes. for your glory. I will serve you for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you've prayed that prayer, I want you to tell somebody. Also, there's somebody out there that has pain in their back right now. The Lord Jesus is going to heal that pain. He's going to take that pain from your body right now. Just receive it by faith. I curse that pain. I command it to leave your body now. Muscles be healed, bones be healed, nerves be healed, tendons be hurt, healed. Pain, leave, and I forbid you return. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. And, and listen, <clears throat> you prayed that prayer, you're saved. You, you know, the Lord Jesus Christ now has come into your heart. You've confessed your sins. And um, he has forgiven you of your sin. And the other thing, uh, if you have received that healing, call us, 217-228-1616. Let us know. But not only for that reason, but call us. If you've given your heart to the Lord or you've come back to the Lord Jesus Christ, um, give us a call because we want to know, you know, that um, um, and, and whatever we can do. And let me give you some steps. You can say, well, Gary, what do I do now? I, I've done this. Here's, here's the next steps you need to do. If you don't have a Bible, I want you to get yourself a Bible and um, uh, begin reading in the book of John, the Gospel of John. And if you don't know how to study the Bible, look in the contents, and it'll tell you what page to go to. Uh, the Gospel of John is, is in the New Testament, and because you have to learn what the Word is all about and what the Bible is all about, how to use this, this good book. And because it's God talking to you. It's God's voice talking to you. And it'll tell you all about Jesus, tell you all about why He came, and all about His... His, uh, his death and crucifixion for us, dying on a cross for us. And then I want you to get into a church home. You've got to have fellowship. You've got to have the church of believers, a Bible, preaching, teaching, church. And, and go to church and, and uh, just, just be ministered to. The Holy Spirit will help you in that. And then uh, pray, just like I'm talking to you, talk to God. Just like Brother Todd said a prayer. It's just talking to God. He's, he, it doesn't have to be anything fancy. Oh God, you know, I love you. Forgive me of my sin. Give him a lot of praise. Give him a lot of thanks. The Word of God says thank. Give him thanks all the time. And uh, that, that's your start. ABC. You know, just admit your sin. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and, and go forth. God will help you. Thank you all for being around the table. It's been a pleasure thank having you, you here. Brother Todd, you, God bless you in your ministry, and we'll pray for that ministry as you go forth. Thank you. Appreciate it. Contact us at Outreach Connection, WTJR 222 North 6th Street, Quincy, Illinois 62301.